wanted out of Division 1B in the hurling, that didn't work out for us. Um, so we kind of set all our, uh, lumped everything into the championship with that and uh, really just to get a home victory against um, against Wexford here. Um, last uh, Saturday week was the was the big target and we achieved that now, so it's a uh, kind of a lot of pressure off us in, in one sense. We want to get Galway back to being a top four team and since 2005 Galway haven't been in the last four and Galway hurling public and ourselves and everybody must realise that so we have got to get one step at a time so we are really looking to get into the last four this year and the easiest way to do that is, is win a lesser title. A goal chance for Offaly, Shane Dooley! We had 20 minutes to go, we were we were nine points up, we didn't score for the last 20 minutes of the game. Um, let Wexford back into the game, completely lost their shape out around the middle of the field. And I think because the players haven't had that success or level of success, that they, they didn't, they were thinking to themselves, we don't want to lose the game. And there was a natural mindset in to sit back and rather than just go on out and win the game. We were very happy early on in the league. We've had a little blip, uh, probably the day in, in Pierce Stadium against Waterford, and probably in hindsight, we were a bit tired that day. Could have won it uh, within, a, you know, if we'd won that match, we were probably in the league semi final. Very happy with our performance against Tip and Cork, and then had a, a, you know, a bad day in the office against Kilkenny. But overall, I suppose really the two games against Dublin in the relegation fight um, I suppose gave us a lot of confidence because what we'd seen earlier part of the league stood up then overall. Galway are a huge challenge, they're a Division 1 team, they're, they'll be a team that have been ranked and uh, predictions have been made that they, they could be a team that could top with Kikini or Tipperary. Um, so I mean there's a huge challenge out there for us, um, but it's one that we, we set our stall out earlier in the year, we wanted to be in this position and, and I hope that uh, just the players can play with uh, pride and passion and give everything they have and when they walk off the field at the end of 70 minutes that they, they can look, to themselves, look into themselves and say that yeah we give it all and, and see where it takes us after that. Often not really a league team and didn't go that well in the league and always haven't been a league team and but awfully in the championship or awfully you know they they really don't fear anybody. We ran Dublin very close last year I think we a couple of late goals uh, sealed it for Dublin and Dublin went within a puck of a ball and get to the All Ireland final so I mean it's easy to assess it on that. Definitely can reach, can reach an Insta final. We have the players and we're good enough and we're well set up to, to win against Offaly. But it will take a big effort. I mean, we all know about performances. You have to perform. Cunningham has announced the return of first choice goalkeeper James Skell, while Joseph Cooney's selection at right half back is a little unexpected. Of course, the presence of Joe Canning at full forward transforms the look of this Galway team. The Offaly selection is the same that started against Wexford in the quarter final. David Kenny leads the team from the fullback position and has two tight marking corner backs in Derek Morkin and David Franks to support him. Centre field will be crucial and the partnership of Conor Mahan and Kevin Brady has huge potential based on the performance against Wexford. The main man up front is Shane Dooley. Puck out by James Scahill. Nicely picked up, Damien Hayes. Kenny under pressure, should have been uh, dealt with better, and here's a chance for Galway. Thought about taking a shot there, but on second occasion, Connor Cooney breaks down the Offaly defence so easily and smashes it into the back of the net, and that's a wonderful start for Galway, but it must be said that the high ball seemed to pose problems for David Kenny. Should have dealt with it better, but Connor Cooney decided he had the space and he cracked it home. Yeah, he dummied the, the strike there, Martin. That's what gave him the extra little yard there and knocked it in an excellent goal. And that's the first attack that Galway have made, really, and the uh, excellent goal for Galway. That will settle them. Waiting for it is David Bark. Goes for distance again. Connor Cooney inside the cover. Could this be another goal in the space of a minute? Bats it into the back of the net. Two cracking goals for Galway. They have set out their stall early and easily. And Connor Cooney can afford a smile. Within a minute, two goals by this man, Connor Cooney. Yeah, ran through and batted in. Very hard to um, stop those ones and has a pace on David Kenny, who's a very good fullback. Um, couldn't do anything with him really and um, you know excellent goal again six points up for Galway now it's a brilliant start for the Western men Irla Tanyan sending it a diagonal ball across this will unsettle awfully conceding two goals in the space of a minute Rory Hanafi will try to provide a little bit of leadership and he takes the challenge to Galway dropping this one in 
Goalkeeper, Skehel comes off his line, survives the challenge, but gives the ball away to Shane Dooley. Skehel is off his line, what can Dooley do? And it's in the back of the net. What a brilliant start to this match in O'Moore Park. Two goals in a minute for Galway. A minute and a half later, Offaly have the ball in the back of the Galway net. Well, Scale hasn't played for quite a while, um, Martin. That was a dreadful mistake. He could have done anything with it. He could have belted it out 90 yards. Um, came out to give support and handed it straight to Shane Dooley, the most dangerous man that you want to give the ball to. And he did very well to put it into the corner. A bizarre sort of scoreline at the start of a match. 2-1. Loose ball, this time picked up by Colin Egan, almost at least. Pulled down by Conor Mahan. Hovering there is Tony O'Gregan. Rory Hanafy turns to his left and drives it long. Neil Dunahoo is there, trying to shake off the challenge of Cahill Parlin, who's operating at top of the left. This is the two-goal hero, Connor Cooney. Sideline. Irla Tanyan's cut in. There's plenty of height. Lovely layoff from Joe Canning to Cyril Donlan. Is this the first point of the match? The umpires are perfectly positioned. White flag goes up. That's the first point of the game. After eight minutes of action. Yeah, just a sideline knocked in there, and uh, when it broke to Joy, gave a little pass. Shane Dooley comes out around the 45 to try and gather. Good layoff indeed by Colin Egan. A chance here for Conor Mahan. And what Cyril Donlan can do at one end, Conor Mahan can come from midfield and do likewise. Yeah, good score by Conor Mahan there. He's been switched into centre forward now, Marty, as well, so uh, awfully are, are um, pushing things forward to, to get back on level terms if they can. Hanafi, solid at centre half back. Irla Tanya floating in, another one of these dangerous balls. The goalkeeper loses in the sunshine. Lucky awfully, but they're still not out of danger here. Sir Donlan, and the goalkeeper did well, but the ball is scrambled over the line. Just for a moment, James Dempsey looked like he had it saved, but then Galway came charging in. And it ended up in the back of the Offaly net. And again, it's a goal that should have been saved, with uh, the credit this time going to David Burke. Yeah, well, stairs at times. Mission accomplished. 25-year-old from Tullamore. Son, of course, of former Offaly manager and former Offaly star. And 20, 30 yards towards him, whereas I think he might have been better off to move towards the goal and give him more space. So when Burke tried to play the ball into him, uh, it was an easy colour for Rory Hanafi. Dumont Horn takes the free, it ends up with Conor Mahan. That's a splendid point from the midfielder who is operating on the 40, posing a few problems for Galway centre half back Tony O'Gregan. Irla Tanya. Battling on this occasion with Kevin Brady. Tanyan comes away with it. He's a big, strong man. Seems to operate better when given a bit of space around the middle of the field. Joe Cannon blocked down. Gets a second of chance. And he floats one in, but it's crawling to the left and right. And the Offaly crowd substantially enhanced. Uh, something happens in favour of Offaly. I think they're going to have the biggest cheer by far. Great catch by Colin Egan. Giving it back to Derek Morgan. Floats it in, it's curling, and it's a magnificent point by the right corner back from Shinro. Yeah, a huge score for Rafi that time, Derek Morkin is uh, actually operating at left half back, and Rigney has gone back into uh, left corner back to pick up uh, Damien Hayes, but that was a huge score. And he just about got there, he judged it perfectly, landing right on the top of uh, James Skehill's crossbar. Sideline ball again for Offaly. When you look at the, the scores now, I mean, there's only a couple of points between them, and uh, Offaly's scoring actually is a little bit more healthy than, than Galway that they've got. Um, seven scores now to Galway's four. Coming through the middle, centre half forward, Niall Burke with his first point of the match. 
Yeah, we've just seen Niall Burke, and he had a very, very um, impressive league, just coming from the under-21 team. Big, strong player, very direct, and a uh, good point. 3-2 to 1-6. Most enjoyable, first half, free-flowing. Another effort, and the umpires have to bend their backs again. This time, they're signalling wide. There was a doubt between them. James Scal, Cyril Donnell, easily gathering. One touch early. Umpires again, perfectly positioned, and that's another great point by Cyril Donnell. His second, straight from the puck out by James Scal, gathered by Cyril Donnell easily, but he hit it magnificently between the posts. Well, the wing back was caught on the. Uh, in front that time for puck out you should not always be behind your man and try and knock the ball down puck out from James Dempsey was aimed straight at Kevin Brady Colin Egan takes a little bit too much time David Burke releases it hard working Brendan Murphy again coming into challenge available in front of us here is Andy Smith balances on the hurl misjudged the final shot so Rory Hanafy pulling in a first time in the air, Dermot Horn sending it down towards Brendan Murphy tempo of the game is fairly fierce, Colin McAllister hesitant to blow the whistle Offaly crowd say free, referee says nothing, going through his ear Latanya, given a bit of space and a bit of time splits the post for his first point of the match yeah, great score there by Tanyan. Uh, fought hard for the ball, Marty, and came away with it and uh, made a, a good 20-yard run and snapped it over the bar. That was a, a crucial score for Galway because they hadn't scored for a while up to then, uh, apart from Niall Burke. And um, possibly you could have said that they should have uh, got the score earlier with Sil Donnellan, but, you know, showed good commitment from Galway and uh, good pace of the game now. David Horn uh, is the player that requires attention, and while he's doing that, let's go down to the sideline for some news from Joanne. Well, Ollie Baker is very angry down here on the sideline. He's, he's giving out to the linesman. He claims that the last awfully effort on goal, that it was actually over the bar. Now, it didn't look it from here, but he said that that's twice you've done it because he's referring to... Well, it is coming through. Oh, Conor Mahan just took his eye off it and coming forward is Kevin Hines. Powerful in the challenge. Down to a Cyril Donnell, who's posing serious problems at left half forward for Offaly. Donnell has a goal from just in front of the stand and that sails between the posts for his third point of the match and no doubt about it Ollie Baker will have to try and thwart Cyril Donlan of clean possession because Offaly have a serious problem with Donlan. Well that score was made by the quality of the ball that Kevin Hines drove into him nice and low and Donlan went around his man and uh, we heard Joanne there earlier talk about um, a couple of scores that Ollie Baker was creating no crib that one straight over the bar by Cyril Donlan excellent score for Galway Good hands by Brendan Murphy. More under pressure. Getting it out just a little bit. Without a hurl. Comes back for Shane Dooley. Calling outside is Brendan Murphy. Three Galway players converge. Under pressure, he loses the slither. Coming in is Kevin Brady. Gets it inside for Shane Dooley. And he manages to squeeze it to the wrong side of the pass. And that this is the man that scored a goal in eight points against Wexford. He's halfway there already, really, because he scored a goal in three in this match. This one is dropping a little bit short. Easily gathered by Tony O'Gregan. Tries to send it out towards Neil Dunahoe. And that is a... Cuts it in well. Breaking ball. Nicely picked up, sent forward by David Bark to David Kenny, whose hand pass didn't quite work out for his Dermot Horn. Instead, it's picked up by Niall Burke. Coming through the centre, it's Tanya. Difficult to mark. Difficult to stop from scoring. And that's his second of the match. Well, a very good score by Tanya again. Almost a replica of the first one that he got. Came through, won the ball. And again, that came from a, a, an awfully mistake in the, out of defence. And, um, you know, awfully, if they continue to make mistakes like that, they're going to be in trouble. Awfully on the counter-attack. Use the shot. And again, it's Cyril Donlan. Serious problem from an awfully perspective. Flicking it across. Chan, oh, that's a wonderful block down. And again, great play by Dermot Horn. At the end of it all, it is still a point for Galway. Damien Hayes getting his first point of the match, but wonderful defending by Offaly. 
Yeah, two good block downs there, Marty, in succession. But you'd expect the likes of um, Joe Canning or, or, or Damien Hayes when they get the ball to run at the defenders. Um, and Cyril Donnell is creating big problems for um, for the offly defence on the uh, left hand side, on the right hand side. Picked up here by Kevin Brady. Under pressure, concedes to Slither. And Galway send it down with great efficiency. Get good ball in and, and take on the offly defence. I think that'd be far more productive for them. Joe Canning focuses on the target, lifts and strikes, and registers his first point of the game. But your point is well made, Donald, when you consider that Galway scored three goals uh, in a bit of a flurry. Well, I think the referee claimed that he was being held. I think Offaly will claim that they just had their hands across him. Um, semantics, I suppose, Marty, really. Didn't lift it well. Could still work out. Lovely pick up by Damien Hayes. Turns inside. That's a beautiful point by Damien Hayes. Really classy corner forward play, but very simple. Well, when your luck is in, Marty, your luck is in. I think that Tony O'Regan failed to pick the ball, and I remarked earlier about how tight the, the pitch was caught. But a great pick up from Damien Hayes. And once he gets a yard or two in you, you know, very hard to stop. And Galway going through a period of dominance now. Awfully need to. It's going to be taken by Shane Dooley. A simple tap over for him. Has um, Galway have had some success, and of course, out tonight, um, Sir Donnellan as well. Touching by that shot we had of the Galway management team discussing tactics and perhaps changes. You can expect a Galway sub very shortly as Offaly go back into the attack. And with a lovely strike, nice and easy, Shane Dooley gets his fifth point of the game. Yeah, beautiful point there. And Fergal Moore was caught on the wrong side, Marty. I think that he's giving him a yard of space out in front of himself. He'd be better off if he stood up shoulder to shoulder. There's a huge um, degree of space in front of Shane Dooley and Doffley in fairness to him are, are um, using it well. So a change in the Galway lineup. Paul Gordon from Abbey Denairi is coming on instead of Niall Dunahoo. Who looks particularly disappointed, but perhaps the goal well uses the short grip so he can't be hooked. Just gets past Tony O'Gregan. Fargal Moore hit a fair shoulder by Colin Egan, and Regan again under pressure delivers it long despite Egan's uh, great efforts. Superb catch by Rory Hannafy. Cyril Donnan coming into challenge. Shane Dooley, nice low ball as Offaly go in pursuit of more scores. And what about that? Classy play. By the fateful county, responding magnificently to the challenge being posed by Galway. Well, that type of play is very hard to counteract. Rory Hanafi going back from um, you know, the centre back position, beautiful ball, and Shane Dooley showed very great coolness, knocked it up to Egan, and a great point. Egan joins the awfully attackers that have now registered scores. And there's a little bit of a delay as well because uh, attention is required for the centre half. And the full back line and they've made uh, changes accordingly. And Joe Canning with his second point of the match. Two minutes of additional time going to be added on in this first half. Nice pull in mid-air by David Burke. Going back to gather is David Kenny. Once again, it's the Galway inner line that's posing all the problems. Nice ball inside. And here comes David Burke. Sending it across. They're queuing up. Hayes. Oh! Absolutely brilliant hurling by Galway. David Park laying it off to Damian Hayes. And on the fourth occasion in Port Leisha, James Dempsey is plucking the slither out from the back of the net. Yeah, it was a wonderful goal, Marty. David Burke actually pulled in it in midfield and came back up in support. And a uh, beautiful ball across Cyril Donnellan and uh, Damian Hayes queuing up for it and uh, a great goal. And what a time to get it just before half time. Now, what can Offaly produce? 4-10, 1-10 is a pretty intimidating scoreline, and we're only halfway through. Johnny Cohen. Nice hurler from Loch Ray. Getting it in for his Joe Cannon. He's looking at the post. And he splits it beautifully. Just a beautifully balanced hurler wherever he plays. And he's now operating out around the half forward line at right half forward. And Galway have clearly established themselves over the last 10 minutes or so 
and that scoreline is intimidating if you happen to be from Offaly. Yeah, and Marty, what they've done is they've brought uh, David Burke to play um, right out in the middle of the field, so he's playing withdraw and roll, and they're just playing five forwards, maybe three and a half line and two inside, and they're creating great space for the for them once they get the ball at midfield. And it was Damian Hayes who laid off that pass, and in fact, there he is again, pulled in the first time, stopped on this occasion. Cahill Carla sending it forward to Derek Morkin down towards Fergal Moore under pressure from Dooley gets the ball cleared but it's gone out over the sideline sideline ball for Offaly like they've got some great goals and maybe one mistake by the goalie Dempsey and, and the Offaly goal was a mistake as well by Scale. but like the goals they've got are very very good ones they are doing them in training but like they're taking the man on and walking through the tackle like you know Offaly Offaly would have to stop them stand, as a back say as a back defender stand them up t don't let them pass by all by all which way hook or crook but what's happening is they're just walking Cyril Don is walking through Conor Cooney's walking through Cannon Damien is they're all flying through Davy Burke and they're just you know they're 10 up they yeah. should push on for there, there, there is serious movement in, in, in that forward line I know Don O'Grady was saying that in, mm. in the first half period there that he would like to see the six forwards stay in the position but I mean there's nothing wrong with the movement once the players that are moving know exactly what the game plan is and know exactly where, why, why they're moving to wing forward and there's a purpose to the game and certainly with Galway in the first half every time they've got ball they start the running at their opponents you know and they've created great chances I mean 4-11 in a match against 110 you know you'd nearly say that's a full-time score Michael I mean I'd like to maybe someday you got under a measuring tape to measure the pitch here because there's an awful lot of scores coming very very easy around the play around the field. I don't know whether distance wise at that field is, is, is the full size of a turtles here behind us or Crow Park and stuff like that because um, scores are coming very very easy. It's, it's a high scoring game which is excellent to see. I'm not giving out about that. It is fantastic to see. That's what we want in well, the game of hurling. I suppose they've been smart about it. It's not the length of the field that's troubling awfully at the no, moment. No, but it's, it's not. Some it's of the not, no, no, full back yeah, it's the full back line. Joel it, Canning was the man everybody would be looking at mm -hmm. uh, at the start of this match to maybe get a goal or two but it's the man standing beside him. Yeah well like, it's, Cody, it's, that's it's a great Michael, scoring. It's a, and it's a great thing for Galway. It's great to see Galway score without Joe Kennedy, the dominant forward. Like, this guy, Conor Cooney, is a new guy in the block. He's actually from St. Thomas' club, the same club as Anthony Cunningham. Here's Cyril Donlan going forward, sending it across. Joe Canning was hovering. And once again, it's James Rigney. Small in stature, but big in heart. He's giving it everything there at left half back. Comes out for his Damien Hayes. Straight between the posts. He now has a personal tally of a goal and three points. And his goal in the first half will be talked about for some time. Not just the finishing, but indeed the build-up as well. Fine point. <laughs> Referee says play on. Earl Tanyan sending it over towards Joe Canning. David Kenny over there keeping him company. Canning gets away, flicks it inside, does more trouble for Offaly. And David Burke just left it behind him. Flicks it across to Joe Canning. And there's still trouble, and eventually it is out for 60. A formidable force. Joe Canning, at the start of the second half, takes the first 65 of this particular period, and seven minutes in the first half. And to be honest with you, it looks something similar in the second half. The ball sent in by Joe Canning. David Kenny has lost his hurley. He's trying to knock it back first as keeper, and he concedes a 65. And David Kenny was trying to explain to his goalkeeper to come off his line because he'd lost the hurl. So you can see the signal here, looking to his goalkeeper to come out. And the tap back just was off target. So more pressure for Offaly. Yeah, needless mistake there, Marty. You know, um, James Dempsey could have come a little bit quicker and uh, taken the ball on the end line maybe, but... Um Hopefully going to make a change to their full back line. We believe, uh, as you saw there a moment ago, Chris McDonald is going to come in as we watch Joe Canning take.